Nation. Welcome to Rams Report. I'm Danny Kleppinger with Miles Simmons. Welcome to Rams Nation. I'm your host, Danny Kleppinger. Welcome to Rams Report. I'm Danny Kleppinger here with Miles Simmons in the beautiful Napa Valley. This is where the team will be staying for the week as they prepare for kickoff against the San Francisco 49ers coming up on Sunday. The Rams defensive line is downright scary. They start four first round draft picks and added a fifth in Nick Fairley as a reserve. Fairley was drafted by the Lions right before the Rams drafted Robert Quinn. His pass rushing abilities alongside Aaron Donald will make them a dynamic interior rush duo. Bell is coming back after a two game suspension. I talked to Coach Fisher about Bell earlier this week and he said what makes him so dangerous is his versatility. He's a big back, he can break tackles, he's able to catch the ball and make big plays down the field. He's also got great balance so he can get on the edge and pick up speed. For more on the matchup, let's send it over to Danny Kluppinger. Thanks, Martin. As you just said, Sean Mannion is the guy likely to take Austin Davis's spot. Coach Fisher said we'll see a lot of the third round draft pick tonight, and he's done fairly well up to this point other than the interception he threw against the Colts, but he's completed over 60% of his passes, has a touchdown, so tonight it's just about showing how much he's improved since being in St. Louis. The next guy I want to talk about may have missed the first few games, but the first round draft pick proved he was worth the wait. Todd Gurley was special this season. He had over 1,000 yards. 10 rushing touchdowns, the first Ram to do that in his rookie season since Eric Dickerson. Oh, Todd Gurley had a really wonderful rookie season. You know what really started to develop throughout the season was the tandem of Todd Gurley and Tavon Austin. Defenses really had to pay attention to both of them. Both of them are huge weapons for the Rams. Tavon very crafty with the ball and his lightning speed really makes him hard to catch. It really does. I've got Tavon Austin with me and you had a 35 yard catch early on. What was it like just to play against another defense that wasn't your team for the first time this season? Oh, I definitely feel good. You had to make a tough decision this week and relieve your offensive coordinator Frank Signetti. What went into that decision? It's a very difficult decision. Rob Boris will be taking over the offensive coordinator duties. What makes you so confident that he can handle the job? Now you and I have talked about it multiple times this season. You've been waiting for your touchdown. You've been waiting for it. You thought maybe it'd be a pick six, but today was a fumble recovery for a TD. Yeah. Bring me back to that play. <laughs> I mean, it was just a uh... Tennessee Lady Vols tip off the brand new season on their home floor today at Thompson Bowling Arena as they host the Carson Newman Eagles in an exhibition matchup. Hi everyone, Bob Kessling along with Danny Kleppinger here at the arena. Danny, the big story today, Tennessee only has seven players ready to go. Holly Warlick has academic rules for a reason. You must go to class, you must sit in the first three rows, and if you don't follow those rules, you're not going to play. So four players suspended because of that, and Isabel Harrison a bit banged up. They're going to hold her out today. As for Carson Newman, Tatum Burst is their big gunner. Tatum Burstrom led the team in scoring last year. Good behind the arc, great three-point shooter, and she works alongside J.J. McLaughlin. The tandem of guards can do it all. And now for Tennessee, with everybody out, that puts a lot of pressure today on Bashara Graves. Bashara Graves is a blue-collar player. Her teammates feed off of her. She's moving up the ranks in almost every category, and she was on that preseason All-SEC list for a reason. Hey, Rams Nation. I'm Danny Kleppinger here with Todd Gurley, who you finally saw in action today. What was it like to get the rest off? You haven't played in almost a year. What was it like? Yeah, it's definitely um, been a long time. Felt like it's been a long time. Try to get better next week. Now, how does a hit in a game compare to what you've seen in practice? What was it like to get hit again? Oh, it's definitely different, but you know, that's why I play this game, to get hit. Because you talked about Wes Welker and you said you guys are getting along, I want to know, are you helping him out here? I mean, it's hard to come in in the middle of the season and just jump right into things. No, believe it or not, he helping me out. <laughs> believe that. That's awesome. And that's the goal and it's true. And it's not about limiting his touches, but more so having the Rams score touchdowns against the Redskins in order to force Kirk Cousins to have to throw the ball. Kirk Cousins has shown in the past that he is turnover prone, especially with the deep ball. He threw two interceptions against the Dolphins last week both in critical third down situations. So Coach Fisher just wants to see his defense bring that pressure once again like they brought against Russell Wilson. And I think if they do that, they should be pretty successful. And one of the keys to victory in this game is to keep the run game going like it was last weekend, particularly in the second half. Oh, no question about it. Island Federal Credit Union Arena here at Stony Brook University. We'll send it over to the third member of our team, Danny Kluppinger, who knows a thing or two about playing hoops on this campus. Guys, I've played my four-year career here, and I can tell you exactly why this house rules. There are two staples at Stony Brook Game Day. The first are these guys behind me, the spirit of Stony Brook pet band. How about this? Let's make it a little interesting. If you okay. don't get 45, we've got a nice pie right over there for your face. Go ahead. It's all you. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a smarty man. 
I talked to Coach Fisher, and he said he wants to see big plays on first and second downs to make those third downs a little bit more attainable. He obviously wants to see execution on third downs, but he also wants to see more points on the board, and he said that it's going to start with the run game, which is a little bit easier said than done against a team like Arizona. And extra fries. Ooh, that sounds bad? tasty. That, no. That, that's so many. Are you full after that? I feel bad. <laughs> I, I think mo I, I'm full. I feel good, but I feel bad. And then it's know. time to go to the gym. Right, right, right. Yeah, I got to go and get in the sauna and sweat some of the chicken off. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Kaepernick is very capable of shifting the field. He can make you miss in the open field. The Rams really need to put pressure on him like they've done to McCown last week and Aaron Rodgers before that. Rams Nation, I'm Danny Clevender here with Jared Cook, and you were able to get that two-point conversion in this last game. Talk to me a little bit about that play and how good did that feel? Uh, we actually practiced it against our defense, and it turned out pretty well. I'm Danny Clevenger here with the two-time Pro Bowler now, Aaron Donald. What was it like to find out that you were going to Hawaii? Oh, it was, it was exciting, you know. So when things like this happen, how do you guys try and make sure no one gets hurt in this process? Man, I don't know, man. You know, dealing with, you know, big guys like us, you know, swinging and... How does an atmosphere like this really bump up that adversity that you have to face and kind of really get you ready for games? Man, it's almost like a game-like situation out here. All these fans, um, and then you got two great teams, um, you know, competitors. Before I let you go, I have to admit to you, I may have dug up an old video of you <laughs> singing some um, Ordinary People. Uh -huh. Can you serenade us with a little tune before you walk off this field? Maybe. Maybe we can catch up later and I'll see All right. what I can do. So another interview, you're promising Rams fans that they're going to hear you sing. Is that that's a promise? A, that's a promise. Now, in our very first one-on-one -on -one together, you said that you would promise me that you would sing at some point in an interview. Now, I think it's the perfect opportunity because it's Trey Mason's birthday. So I feel like you should sing Happy Birthday to Trey Mason. Can I get you to do that? Um, yeah, we, yeah, we'll okay, try. Let's we'll do try. It. <clears throat> Warm up them vocals. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Fans, if you want to see this guy in action, make sure you get out to Lindenwood University tomorrow for the scrimmage. It starts at 5 o'clock. Doors open at 4. We'll see you there. Caramel dipped apples. Hey, we looking good right now. Drunk uncle. You know this one. Come on, everybody has one. Come on. Okay. Ah. Drunk. <laughs> Drunk. Drunk. Uncle. 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 Yeah. Drunk uncle. uncle? Yes. <laughs> Everybody's got one of those. <laughs> <laughs>